Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day. For Wednesday, July the 26th is race number nine at Saratoga. Six furlongs for the grade two honorable Miss Handicap. Let's take a look at this field of fillies and mares and head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com. Download your free Formulator Past Performances and Handicap along with us as we take this short field in post position order. Mike, the number one disco chick, as you see, is the longest shot on the board, 12 to 1 yeah. on Travis Stone's morning line. Disco chick wheels back on pretty short notice. She's always been a really solid horse, 24 yeah. times in the exact out of 41 starts, but this is a big class hike for her. Yeah, she does. She's a really good horse, a really cool horse, too. She just doesn't seem like she's necessarily a graded stakes quality Philly sprinter, but she's got speed in the rail and that can go a long way. Um, it just feels like she's in pretty tough here. The number two is By the Moon, and Michelle Nevin's done such a great job with By the Moon. She's earned a million dollars in her career. She's coming off a pair of graded stakes races. How do you like her at the six? She's done most of her damage yeah. at seven, but she hasn't had many opportunities at the six. That's true. They haven't tried six too often. It's amazing to sort of look at her record and, and see that she's never run six furlongs before in her life, uh, but she's a really good sprinter. I can't imagine that six furlongs makes any kind of a difference to her. She's got really good tactical speed. And it's kind of, you know, you start looking through her, her running lines and start picking them apart. She's very close to having an elite Philly and Mare, you know, one-turn resume. Very close in races like the Ballerina and the Acorn. Ran well in the test. I mean, she's a good horse. She's been a good horse from day one. She beat a decent one last time out in Lightstream, who came back and ran third as the favorite in the grade two Princess Rooney down at Gulfstream Park. And you said a mouthful regarding her tactical speed. She can be wherever Rajiv wants. As we see from the Time Form U.S. pace projector, you're going to get big speed from the far outside. That's yeah. the five Finley's Lucky Charm shipping up from Churchill Downs. We'll get to her in a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if Rajiv allows the one disco chick to be the one to pressure Finley's Lucky Charm if she's fast enough and right. sit just off and try to get the jump on the horse to beat the number three. I, I agree. She has really nice tactical speed and she's just one of those horses who likes to sit for a little while um, just off of other horses and then come with a run. Um, and that's what she did last time. You know, that race, she didn't win that race that impressively, I didn't think, but that pace was really slow. And the horse, you know, Mia Tori, who was second, who was making that pace, I have nothing against her. She's a pretty good horse. And by the Moon had a little trouble driving her down. By the Moon, very familiar with the number three, Paula Silver Lining, your six to five morning line favorite. They used to be stable mates. Paula Silver Lining is now with Chad Brown and Judd Mont Farms. And welcome to the barn. Two starts, <laughs> two grade one races, two grade one wins, and she had to dig both times. Yeah, it never could get that grade one win for Michelle Nevin, but she got it for Chad and Judd Mont. Yeah, I mean, listen, she ran really well in both of those. I'm not so sure that, I know the grade ones are at seven. I'm not so sure she isn't better at six. Um, I've always sort of felt that way about her. The interesting thing about her, Dan, is she's probably going to be a pretty heavy favorite in I this would race. Think so. I mean, you start just looking at her last 10 starts, you know, buyers between 90 and 97. Everybody in this field, save Disco Chick, can run one of those races. I don't know how much she towers over this field, but I do think she's the horse to beat. Yeah, I agree with you, but I, I think that she's very similar on paper to By the Moon, yeah, isn't she? she? Is. They both have good tactical speed. They both kind of run the same figures. We know that they class up at the highest level yeah. against Philly and Mare Sprinters. It might come down to trip and who is where at some point That's going true. into the turn. We'll see if Jose Ortiz can perhaps run down By the Moon. I think By the Moon might take a slight jump on Paul the Silver Lying in here, but they both have good tactical speed. The four is close fall off for Kieran and McLaughlin, and we haven't seen clothes fall off since April in the Madison, where she just didn't fire behind Paula Silver yeah. Lining. And while she is a stakes winner in 2017, that came in a really slow edition of the correction over yeah. the Aqueduct Inner Track. Maybe if the track is wet, she can really mm. move up. She's three for four on a wet track. She's run well at the spa, but she kind of never panned out. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. She's really run some nice races, though. Um, you know, I guess in a lot of ways, it's going to come down to trip for her, too, because I think she wants to just sort of make one run through the stretch. I don't know if the pace is necessarily going to be there for her. Listen, she's another one. You know that she could beat Paula Silver Lining. She's done it before. She did it with a really good trip that day um, in a race where Paula Silver Lining didn't get the most clever ride in the world. Um, so, but you know, she, you know she can do it. She does... I don't know. I don't love her races this year. The more, if the morning line holds true, maybe the five Finley's Lucky Charms, the bet in the race, five horse field. She goes off at seven to two. She could be the controlling speed. She's a perfect five for five at the six for a long distance. She's won eight of ten lifetime. I mean, or her attributes speak for themselves. She's going to yeah. get a little class quiz. Yes, I know she's a multiple graded stakes winner, second in the grade one La Brea, but she's going to be facing the big girls here at the spa. Yeah, she is. We'll see what happens with her. It's, I'm glad they're giving her a chance in this oh, race, though, because I just want to see what she does. You know, she's eight for nine sprinting in her life, and the only 
only loss is at La Brea, where she had a clear stretch lead and got beat a half length in that race. I mean, she's run nothing but good races, but she's also, you know, look at her PPs. She's two to five every week in these races at Churchill. This is going to be a different story. Only a field of five in the honorable miss, but you can make the argument that you've got three of the better Philly and Mir sprinters in the entire country in this race. Let's take a look at our top selections. Mike, you're going to go with the two by the moon. Paula Silver lining, not a lot of value, but I think we agree she's the horse to beat. Yeah. You're going two, three, five. I'm going three, two, five. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I think you're right, though. I think you hit it on the head. It's going to come down to who gets the best trip, I think. If you are playing the Wednesday Saratoga card from home, you sign up to DRF Bets, you'll not only have access to a $300 cash bonus, but also the 10% win place takeout on 10 select tracks throughout the summer, including the spa. Learn more at drf.com slash take 10. Approximate post time for race number nine on Wednesday at Saratoga, the grade two honorable miss handicap, 540 Eastern. Good luck.